What is up, Cowboy Nation? It is Dallas Fan 1997 here. I know, guys, it's been a while since I've been on YouTube. Uh, I've just been taking a break and uh, focusing on other things. So uh, that's what's been going on. Uh, I'm back now, and uh, I just wanted to talk about the offseason moves that the Dallas Cowboys have made. And I got to say, Cowboy Nation, the Dallas Cowboys, for what we can do uh, based on our cap space and based on Dak Prescott's contract, because like Jerry Jones said, Dak Prescott's contract does limit what we can do, uh, have done a great job. I mean, we traded for Stephon Gilmore, uh, and all we had to give up was a fifth round pick. I think that that is a very solid move. He is 32 years old. He's not what he once was when he was younger, but he's still a very solid corner, and he'll be a solid piece to add to our back end that's already very strong. Uh, we also re-signed Donovan Wilson to a three-year deal worth $24 million. Uh, that was a great move. I think it's a very good deal for what uh, Donovan Wilson is worth. Uh, Donovan Wilson had a very good year this year. He had five sacks, um, just had a very solid year. Uh, we now have, in my opinion, one of the strongest back ends in the NFL. Uh, our safety position is very strong with Malik Hooker, J. Ron Curse, Donovan Wilson, along with Israel Mukumu and Marquise Bell as our backups. We have a very strong safety position, a lot of depth there. Uh, same with the cornerback position. Now that you got Trayvon Diggs and Stephon Gilmore, those are two very solid starting uh, corners right there. Plus, you have Deron Bland, who came off a very good rookie season. He had five interceptions. Plus, you have Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis was hurt last year, but he's a solid piece there in the secondary. Plus, don't forget about, I know he didn't have the greatest year, but Kelvin Joseph and Nashawn Wright. I think that they, if we decide to keep Kelvin Joseph, will be pretty solid. He's been great in special teams, and then Nashawn Wright has been coming along better as he's gotten more playing time. So right now, I think the Cowboys have one of the strongest, if not possibly the strongest back ends in the NFL. We're very, very, very strong there. We also re-signed Leighton Van Der Esch to a two-year deal worth $11 million. That was also a great move. Leighton Van Der Esch made a huge difference on our defense this year and in 2021. Uh, as long as he can stay healthy, Leighton Van Der Esch is a very good player. Uh, I've liked Leighton Van Der Esch since we drafted him back in 2018. He was the player I wanted. Um, and it was just a very solid move. Uh, the Cowboys defense going into 2023 is very strong. Uh, the only thing that on defense we need to do to make it like 100% set is we need to re-sign Jonathan Hankins. Jonathan Hankins made a huge difference in the run defense, especially in the playoffs last year. If we could re-sign Jonathan Hankins to a two-year deal worth two to like three million dollars that would be a great move uh so we just need to bring back Jonathan Hankins and then maybe get one more run stuffing defense tackle and we'll be set on the defense really I mean we're pretty much set there as long as we get Jonathan Hankins back and one more run stuffing defense tackle um I've already seen the improvement from Osa Adigizua though Osa Adigizua really came on strong this year he is developing very nicely especially in the run game he did really well in the playoffs i was impressed with osa digizua um did very well this season four sacks in his second year defensive tackle he's a very good pass rushing defense tackle and he's getting a lot better in the run defense i've been impressed with him as well so the and we also brought back dan quinn like i made in my you know last video before this one so our defense going into 2023 is going to be very strong just like it was uh, in 2021 and 2022. Plus, our pass rush is still in good shape. If we get Dante Fowler back, that'd be even better. But I think I'm pretty satisfied with who we have now in Micah Parsons, Dorrance Armstrong, D-Law, along with Sam Williams, who had a very nice rookie year. So even if we don't get Dante Fowler back, we'll still have a very top five pass rush. But adding him would make it even better. So our defense is going to be strong going into 2023. Offensively, we did lose Connor McGovern. He ended up going to the Buffalo Bills on a three-year deal um, worth, I think, $6.7 million a year. Uh, that's kind of a loss. Unfortunately, I wanted Connor McGovern back, but I think we'll be okay. We still got Matt Farniok, of course, Tyler Smith, Zach Martin, Tyler Biotish, who had a Pro Bowl season, 
and even Tyron Smith. Now, Tyron Smith is a concern because he does get injured a lot and he's getting older, but if when he's playing, he's still good to very good offensive tackle. Plus, we also got Terrence Steele on a tender, so even if we don't keep Terrence Steele, we can get a second-round pick if somebody wants him. But if not, we still have a pretty solid offense tackle on him. So we're pretty solid there. We could use a few more depth pieces on the offensive line. Uh, maybe another tackle or guard would be good. Um, but, you know, we need to focus on uh, getting players there. As for the quarterback position, um, Dak Prescott obviously was restructured. It's not the worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world would have been extending Dak Prescott. He came off of a horrible season last year. Probably not a horrible season, let me rephrase that, but not a not a very great season, his worst season possibly in his career. Um, the worst thing we could have done was extend him. He had a terrible playoff performance. I stand by what I said. He was pretty much the reason why we lost to the 49ers outside of losing Tony Pollard um, when he got hurt. Um, we also franchise tagged Tony Pollard, speaking of, speaking of him, uh, for $10 million. I think that's a good move. Uh, Tony Pollard will be fine, guys. He had a broken bone. Broken bone's not the greatest thing, but broken bones will heal. It would have been worse if he, like, tore his ACL or he tore his, like, PCL or something because when you tear a ligament, Cowboy Nation, it can flare up. It can re-tear. It's more susceptible. It's never going to be the same as it was before. A broken bone, while it is not great, it heals faster, and Tony Pollard wasn't like a severe fracture like Dak Prescott's was, so his shouldn't be too bad. He'll be back by training camp, and he should be fine, Cowboy Nation. Uh, broken bones are not the best thing, but they're not the worst thing in the world. A ligament tear or something would have been a lot worse because those are like nagging injuries, and they always can re-tear and really affect a player's ability going forward. So uh, franchise tagging Tony Pollard was the right move. Also, we restructured Tyron Smith, we restructured Michael Gallup and D-Law to create more cap space, so maybe we'll get some more players uh, going forward. And then I waited until closer to the end to mention this, but the Dallas Cowboys also released Ezekiel Elliott. Cowboy Nation, y'all know I'm an Ezekiel Elliott fan. I've won I wanted the Cowboys to draft Ezekiel Elliott back in 2016. He was the player I wanted. Uh, kind of like Leighton Van Der Esch in 2018 is who I wanted. I wanted Zeke in 2016. I've been a fan of Zeke. Once I saw him play against Notre Dame, who's like my second college team in that bowl game against Ohio State, or I was just like, dude, we need Ezekiel Elliott. We needed to draft him. He's going to make a big difference. And he did for his first couple of years. Um, I'm an Ezekiel Elliott fan. I've worn Ezekiel Elliott's jersey all throughout my videos this season. Um, it's sad to see Ezekiel Elliott go, but it's the right decision. Zeke is making way, was making way too much money for what he was producing. He's been struggling the last couple of years with injuries. He hasn't lived up to the contract since he's been paid. And on top of that, the production he's put out there on the field hasn't matched what he's being paid. It just hasn't. It really hasn't. And even though I like Ezekiel, even though I love him, he was the player I wanted. And he had a pretty good career here in Dallas. It was time to move on from him. Um, his contract was just way too much for what he was producing. So that was the right move, even though it's a tough one. We all love Ezekiel Elliott. I love Ezekiel Elliott. It was the right move for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I do want to thank Ezekiel Elliott for what he did for the team. He was a great player for his first couple years. But it's time to move on. We got to move on from Zeke, and we did. And that was the right decision by the front office. Um, honestly, I've been impressed with what the front office has done this year. It looks like they're going all in. They really are. The only things that we need are another running back, possibly Bijan Robinson out of Texas would be a good move, or somebody in the third or fourth round. We need a backup quarterback or a potential future quarterback because we restructured Dak. Um, my opinion is the best thing they could have done with that deal is just left it alone and not even touched it because then if Dak plays bad again next year, we could have moved on from him. But now that we restructured him, we can't really move on from him until after the 2024 season. So that'd be two years from now. Um, but it does kind of show that the Cowboys, they're giving Dak a chance, but they're not like it's showing them, hey, you got to go out there and prove that you can play before uh, making any significant moves. Um but we do need to draft a quarterback. I think that we need to take a quarterback probably between the third and fifth round. Uh, reason being is we could either get a quarterback for the future that could develop in a couple years 
or a solid backup. And the best case scenario is we get that quarterback. It pushes Dak Prescott to play better. And so we get better results on the field. Or if Dak doesn't play as good, we have a quarterback in the future that can replace him. So either way, it's a win-win for the team's sake. Um, and this, and also we need some more depth pieces on the offensive line, maybe another guard or tackle along with we need one more receiver now cd lamb and michael gallup are both very good receivers especially cd lamb he's honestly a borderline elite if not elite receiver after what he showed this season um michael gallup's a very good number two but we need just a number three receivers i i don't know if we're going to bring back ty hilton or possibly people have talked about trading for jerry judy or d hop i don't think the cowboys will trade for d hop just because even though he's a great player, he's going to ask for way too much money and we're not going to be able to afford him. Because remember, we still need to save the cap space that we have for signing our draft picks. So we can sign a couple players, but we still need to use that money to sign our draft picks. So just remember that. Um, they've also Trading for Jerry Judy wouldn't be a terrible option. If we got him or T.Y. Hilton or Odell Beckham for a relatively like fair deal, I think that'd be a great move. Or just drafting a receiver. But really all we need on this team is another stud defense tackle for the defense, maybe another linebacker, um, a receiver, a quarterback, mostly a backup or potential future starter, and some offensive line pieces. And with that said, Cowboy Nation, before I end the video, this season really is going to come down to Dak Prescott, just like it did last year. The defense played good enough to get to the NFC Championship game last year. The offense, for the most part, played good enough to get to the NFC Championship last year. The reason why we didn't get there last year was because of Dak Prescott's poor performance and losing Tony Pollard against the San Francisco 49ers. I'd say 5% of it was Tony Pollard getting injured because the offense became stagnant, but it also came, most of it was Dak because he just didn't play well. Straight up, I stand by that. He is primarily the reason why we lost to the 49ers. So the 2023 season is really going to come down to how healthy we stay and Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott plays bad, this, it, could be, it could alter the way the season goes. So this season, 2023, just like 2022, is going to come down to how well Dak Prescott plays. If he plays well, I'm hoping he does because we really need him to. It'll be, I think we have a pretty good chance in 2023, but if he doesn't, same result as last year we might win one playoff game but we'll lose in the divisional round it'll be the same result so next season this oncoming season is going to come down to how well Dak Prescott plays and I think he needs to go back we know that Dak Prescott is just an average to slightly above average quarterback at this point eight years into his career he is not an elite quarterback he's not really a top 10 quarterback he's a mid-tier average to slightly above average quarterback kind of the same realm as ryan Tannehill or a kirk cousins type of quarterback just middle of the pack not terrible but not great either um we really need to go back to what we did Dak's rookie year and we need to just run the ball heavily with our offensive line and tony pollard and maybe another running back that we draft along with just asking Dak to make the throws that he needs to and just play that conservative game manager role that's what we need Dak to do. He's not going to be good enough to be elite. We just saw what happened last year when he tried to be aggressive and just he turns the ball over too much. But um, with that said, Cowboy Nation, I'm satisfied with what the Dallas Cowboys have done in the offseason so far. Let me know what y'all think in the comments section. I'll come back to you guys later with another video. I don't know when, but probably sometime around the draft. So I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.